Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Jim Ostrowski, and I work with the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energies Environmental Support Division. I welcome you tonight to our public hearing for the Chapatin Retention Treatment Basin. Uh, that's me, uh, again, Jim Ostrowski. A couple quick housekeeping guidelines. I'll go over a few more things in just a moment. Uh, first of all, if you haven't noticed, all lines are muted. It means that you can hear us, but at the moment, we can't hear you. We are recording this meeting tonight, and I'll tell you how we're going to share that later on this evening. Also, if you look under your handouts tab on the GoToWebinar toolbar you have, you should find, I think there's five handouts there. Yeah, five different handouts for tonight. The first one is actually the presentation that you'll hear uh, for just a minute from Amanda and, and Dan. So be aware there's five handouts. Also, I sent a message out to with a couple other important links under the, they'll probably appear under your chat bar. All right. Okay, so, okay, there we go. Uh, joining me today from Eagle is Dan Beauchamp, a CSO, SSO program coordinator, Amanda Bozak, an aquatic biologist, Phil Argeroff, assistant division director, Andrew Hartz, water resource division supervisor, Laura Verona, Public Wastewater Supervisor, and Chris Alexander, Permit Section Manager. Uh, all these staff are with the Water Resources Division here at Eagle. Uh, Eagle staff here this evening uh, are here to describe the proposed denial for the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Permit Modification, answer your questions, and accept formal con comments from the public. Uh, so the way it's going to work is that staff are going to present a PowerPoint slideshow in just a moment with information about the proposed project. Uh, this presentation will be less than 20 minutes. And those attending online at any time can type their question into the question box on your GoToWebinar toolbar. And you can also raise your hand if you want, click the raise hand icon. I'll remind you after the presentation how you do that. So after the presentation and until about seven o'clock PM, we are going to answer questions. And following the question and answer period, we'll have a short break if time allows, we probably won't. We'll probably take Q&A right up till seven o'clock. And, and then we'll he begin the, the hearing, the actual hearing. So please keep in mind that we will not be able to address any questions or comments made during the public hearing portion of the evening. So right now I'm gonna turn it over to Dan Beauchamp and he's going to start us off with the presentation. So Dan, you there? Okay, we see your screen. Okay, great. Thank you all for joining us. Good. Joining hey, Dan, us tonight. One, yep. one more thing, Dan. Before I, I just want to remind everybody that we are all coming remotely to you. So we're all in different locations. And so please excuse any weird noises or anything or any times where you have to switch back and forth between presentations. Thanks. Go ahead, Dan. Thanks, Jim. Um, thank you all for joining us uh, this evening. My name is Dan Beauchamp. Uh, like Jim said, I am the Combined Sewer Overflow Sanitary Sewer Overflow Program Coordinator for the Water Resource Division of Eagle. Um, Co-presenting with me this evening is Amanda Bozak, who's an aquatic biologist in our NPDS program. Um, so we'll be completing a short presentation and like Jim said, then we'll open it up to the group for questions. So since we were unable to meet in person, we wanted to share a picture of us presenters. One on the left is myself uh, fishing with my family this past weekend. And the one on the right is a picture of Amanda on the Detroit River this past fall. So we'll start with a quick overview of Michigan's Combined Sewer Overflow or CSO policy. Uh, we first started to incorporate CSO program requirements into NPDS discharge permits starting in the late 1980s. In 1994, we developed or adopted the uh, Combined Sewer Overflow Control Manual, which is really used as our guidance for controlling untreated CSO discharges. In it, municipalities must either eliminate the untreated CSO discharge, generally done through sewer separation, or provide adequate treatment to meet water quality standards at times of discharge. The treatment is typically done through a retention treatment basin, similar to the uh, Chapton retention treatment basin. It's really up to the local municipality to decide if they want to go the separation or the treatment route. 
It's important to point out that both of these options, though, uh, meet all state and federal requirements. Oops. Next, uh, a quick overview of the existing uh, Chapton Retention Treatment Basin. The area tributary to the Chapton Retention Treatment Basin is predominantly made up of a combined or made up of combined sewers. This means it's one pipe that conveys and collects the domestic sewage and all the stormwater runoff in the same pipe. During a significant rain event, excess combined sewage gets sent to the retention treatment basin once the sewers become full. The combined sewage flows through screens that filter out uh, such items as sanitary trash. Chlorine is then applied to allow adequate time to kill disease causing organisms. In the basin itself, um, solids settle out and the baffles prevent the discharge of floatable material and oils. Once the capacity of the retention treatment basin is exceeded, the treated overflow is sent to the Chapadin Canal, resulting in a discharge that is protective of both public health and the environment. When the rain event ends and there becomes capacity available in the local sewer system, the contents of the basin are drained back to the sewer system to be sent to the wastewater treatment plant for full treatment. The Chapitan Retention Treatment Basin is also equipped with a flushing system, which flush any remaining solids left in the retention treatment basin, flush it to the wastewater treatment plant. This is done so the retention treatment basin is ready for the next wet weather event. To ensure that the Chapitan Retention Treatment Basin is providing adequate treatment and meeting water quality standards, the county conducted comprehensive in-stream evaluation across a wide range of discharges from small to large uh, discharge events. This was done to demonstrate that water quality standards uh, are being met when it discharges. The county has successfully demonstrated and we have approved that the existing basin meets the dissolved oxygen standard it protects public health and eliminates the discharge of raw sewage. It protects downstream biological communities. And finally, it complies with the total residual quarrying requirements. The current National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System or NPDES permit issued by the Water Resource Division of Eagle authorizes the discharge to the Chapadin Canal of Lake St. Clair. The facility discharges approximately seven times per year, which is really dependent on wet weather. Eagle remains committed to supporting projects that protect the Great Lakes, including Lake St. Clair. We recognize Lake St. Clair has water quality issues, and Eagle has drafted a Lake St. Clair framework that outlines ways to help address these issues. This project is not included in that framework. This project is voluntary, so it has not been required in the county's current National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System or NPDES permit, nor has it been requested by EGLE. What the permit does include is a green infrastructure program and or implementing post-construction requirements in conjunction with the county's municipal separate storm sewer system or MS4 NPDES permit to reduce stormwater from actually entering the system. This is an aerial view of the proposed project in the Chapadin Canal. The first arrow is where the current gate structure is located. The second arrow is the approximate location of the proposed gate structure. This is roughly 1,400 feet of the Chapadin Canal that would be required for this project. The proposed project would store treated CSO wastewater to reduce the number of basin discharges from four to approximately 4.5 times annually. The proposed project would require three different permits from Eagle Water Resources Division. The three permits needed are the Great Lakes Bottomland Conveyances, an NPDES permit modification, and a sewerage systems permit. The Great Lakes Bottomland Conveyances permit was previously denied because the application was missing some key components, which included the resolution of approval from a local unit of government and proof of ownership for the upland along the canal shared with the Shore Club Apartments. 
Next, the county would need a permit modification for their current National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, or NPDES permit, which we are discussing today. And finally, if both the bottomlands permit and the NPDES permit modification were approved, the county would need a construction permit under the sewerage system program. And we will discuss some of the issues EGLE has related to the design under this sewerage system permitting program in this presentation today. EGLE has concerns with the submitted project details. These include taking a protected water of the state, how the county, how the wetland the county proposes to build in the canal will function, how the structure will be maintained ready for use as required in the NPDES permit, how the project will protect groundwater, and potential odor issues associated with the open air structure. The Chaffetan Canal is the water of the state held in trust for use, use by Michigan's approximately 10 million residents. This project would eliminate the public's ability to use and access the canal and would sever the connection of the Chaffetan Canal from Lake St. Clair. The canal would no longer be available for fish or other species to use as habitat. Here's the aerial view again of the proposed project. Notice there are residential areas like condos, apartments, and a marina adjacent to the canal. Again, we have noted the proposed gate structure. Above this gate structure, the county proposes to remove the boat launch, widen the canal, and plant wetland plants. Due to these plantings and the design of the structure, the county states the structure will function as a wetland and provide tertiary treatment of the already treated CSO wastewater. However, the United States Environmental Protection Agency and Eagle Water Resources Division wetland staff specify constructed treatment wetlands should be in uplands and not in surface waters. The proposed structure will be in a public surface water. Currently, the discharge from the Chapitan Retention Treatment Basin enters Lake St. Clair and is diluted by the lake. The proposed structure will be separated from the lake and therefore there will be no dilution. Any plants in the structure will be exposed to total residual chlorine, high water depths, and solids that are not diluted. While the county states the structure will function as a wetland and provide tertiary treatment of the treated CSO wastewater, the supporting documentation did not provide enough detail or support of this proposed tertiary treatment. It also did not include how the wetland would function under the harsh conditions of chlorine, water depth, and solids. Therefore, Eagle believes the structure will function more like an open air storage lagoon than a wetland. The NPDES permit requires that the retention treatment basin be promptly dewatered or emptied as soon as possible and shall be maintained in readiness for use. Macomb County has to dewater this volume at a controlled rate to prevent too much flow to be sent to the sewer system to not cause discharges and or basement flooding downstream. As a result, it may take several days after a wet weather event to completely empty the entire stored volume. This additional time will increase the settling of solids. With no way to adequately flush the proposed storage structure, coupled with the proposed plantings, we are concerned about the ability to remove solids. This could lead to additional solids being discharged during subsequent discharge events and also odors when the storage structure is empty. Eagle has concerns with the possibility of regrowth of bacteria and viruses. If another rain event were to occur before the basin uh, completely emptied, there's the potential for regrowth to occur and this to be discharged, thus leading to human health and water quality impacts. As I stated already, there is a potential for the storage volume to sit in the storage structure for an extended period of time waiting to be emptied to the sewer system. This additional volume, especially during the summer months, has the potential to cause odors. The Chapadin Basin and proposed storage structure is located in an urbanized area within 100 feet of existing properties and a marina. Part 22, groundwater quality, contains specific requirements regarding wastewater treatment or storage lagoons to prevent infiltration and exfiltration and possible impact to groundwater. 
It requires these systems consist of a composite liner or a design that provides equal or greater environmental protection. The proposed project does not include a liner and has not supplied the necessary information to support that it provides equal or greater environmental protection. Eagle is not aware of permitting, nor is there a precedent for a project like this that involves taking an open stretch of public water for storage of C treated CSO wastewater from a facility that already protects water quality. Eagle does not believe that adequately treated retention treatment basin discharges to Lake St. Clair is the issue impacting water quality, but rather the loss of coastal wetlands, failed septic systems, and illicit connections to urban stormwater systems are the root causes of the water quality problem. Eagle believes the best opportunities for environmental benefit lie upstream of the Chapman facility rather than providing additional storage space for treated wastewater at the expense of more than a quarter mile of protected state waters that currently provide habitat for fish and wildlife and recre recreational amenities for the public. Based on these factors, Eagle proposes to deny the requested National Pollutant Discharge Le Elimination System permit modification. So Eagle is ready to work with Macomb County officials on reducing retention treatment basin discharges heading into Lake St. Clair. Some possible alternatives to this project that Eagle can support include in-system storage. This is a project that Macomb County is proposing that we support. Basically, it consists of installing gates or other devices to use existing infrastructure and store that flow until after the wet weather event has ended, when it can be sent to the wastewater treatment plant for full treatment. Second is expansion of the current basin. This would be to expand the current uh, concrete retention treatment basin and add additional storage volume within the existing property of the Chapterton retention treatment basin and to not take waters of the state for open aired storage. The third is green infrastructure. Green infrastructure could be installed upstream of the RTB within the collection system. The green infrastructure practices would infiltrate stormwater, resulting in it, in it not getting into the combined sewer system. A large scale green infrastructure program would over time reduce the volume and frequency of RTB discharge events. The fourth is coagulation addition. A coagulant such as ferric chloride or alum could be applied to the flow entering the existing um, retention treatment basin. The coagulant would clump together the particles in the wastewater, allowing them to settle quicker in the basin. This would not change the volume or frequency of the RTB discharge. However, it would improve the quality of the flow that is currently being discharged uh, out the RTB. And finally, sewer separation. Uh, Macomb County completed a cost estimate for complete sewer separation and determined that it was not cost effective. However, there may be areas where targeted sewer separation makes sense, such as areas near the lake or doing separation in conjunction with, with planned road work. So Eagle remains committed to supporting projects that protect the Great Lakes. As stated previously, we, we agree with Macomb County that Lake St. Clair has water quality issues and have previously drafted the Lake St. Clair framework that outlines ways to help address these issues. Some of the items in the framework are green infrastructure. So green infrastructure program in both the combined sewer and separated sewer areas would reduce and treat stormwater at its source, resulting in water quality improvements to Lake St. Clair. Next is identification and elimination of listed discharges. A couple years ago, Macomb County uh, did great work and found in an apartment complex that was incorrectly tied into the storm sewer uh, system, resulting in raw sewage ultimately being discharged to Lake St. Clair. Unfortunately, there probably are other similar situations out there that currently exist. So an illicit discharge program could lead to a significant improvement in water quality. And finally, construction and or restoration of coastal marshes. When you look at the current Lake St. Clair shoreline, 
pretty much everything is hard armored with seawalls and such. Uh, historically, Lake St. Clair contained a lot of coastal marshes that provided a tremendous benefit to water quality. Therefore, action is needed to return to shoreline softening and wetland restoration. In closing, there are many concerns with the proposed project and many project alternatives available to the county, which we have quickly discussed today. The main issue for the proposed denial of the NPDES permit modification is the taking of a water of the state, the Chapitan Canal, part of Lake St. Clair, for a discharge that already meets water quality standards and NPDES permit requirements. And this is especially true when there are multiple other options available to improve the water quality in Lake St. Clair. We welcome you to provide comments at the hearing starting at 7 p.m. today. Comments can also be submitted in our MyWaters online database or mailed. There is a document you can access in the pre you can access this presentation in the documents and so this slide will be in there to help you follow where to submit comments. Also in the chat box, there is a link um, that actually takes out a couple of these steps listed on this slide and gets you a more direct access to that public comment area. And if you are unable to submit comments online, you can mail comments to Matt Starin, and that's S-T-A-R-O-N, at W-R-D Eagle, and Eagle is E-G-L-E, -E, at P.O. Box 30. 458 in Lansing, Michigan, 48909-7958. With that, we'll turn the um, present or the, we'll turn this back over to Jim and Phil, who are going to help moderate our question and answer period. So thank you. All right. Thanks, Amanda, and thank you, Dan, for a good presentation. I'm going to bring it back to me here. Um, so just stand by for a minute and Bring my screen up. Okay. All right. So, a couple things. Now we got time for some questions and answers. Uh, to ask a question, you can type your question into the question box on your GoToWebinar toolbar. There's a little question drop down. Just type it in, hit submit, and we'll read them off. Uh, you can also click the raise hand icon. So, on your toolbar, you'll see this little hand. Click on it, and it'll raise your hand. And we'll see that and we can call on you and try to unmute your mic. So be ready if we call on you to unmute your mic and hopefully it'll work. All right. So again, oops, there's our panelists for tonight that are going to help us answer questions. Uh, looking at my board here, it looks like um, we do have someone that's had their hand raised for a while. Um, David Turner. So uh, David Turner, your hand's been up for a while. I'm gonna unmute your mic now, so you can go ahead and go. Uh, I had I had intended to make a comment, not a question. Oh. I thought the comment was for the uh, for the seven o'clock session. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to make a comment, and this is for everybody, if you want to make an official comment, we'll do that right after the Q and A. So. Oh, I don't have a question right now. Okay. Well, we'll come back to you later then. Thanks. All right. Does anybody else? We have one that came in through the question box here. Uh, I'll read it off for you, Phil. Uh, why is Eagle identifying these alternatives that are far more expensive? Are you concerned that that is difficult for the community to afford these alternatives? Systems much more expensive, RTB in-system storage, expansion of current basin, green infrastructure, coagulant addition and sewer separation. So thanks, Jim. Um, I'll start it out and then I'd like Dan to help um, supply the rest of the answer to this. Not, not all the alternatives that we presented uh, would be more costly and maybe Dan, you can go into that discussion. Yeah, so, um, you know, green infrastructure, uh, complete sewer separation is, is one that would be definitely more costly and um, also expanding the, the current uh, basin within the existing footprint. But there are other options such as green infrastructure uh, where, you know, a, a, a large scale green infrastructure program uh, could be done uh, 
so it, it, it could be done two ways. It, it could be done with redevelopment. So that uh, that those green infrastructure practices, the cost to to do those would uh, fall then on the uh, on the developer. And so if you wanted to do if Macomb County wanted to do a large scale uh, program, they could uh, do that. Plus, you know, install green infrastructure at key locations, um, you know, throughout uh, throughout the, the county in areas where they can have a huge impact. So um, there are different alternatives there that uh, aren't necessarily more cost or, or aren't more costly. Additionally, the coagulation addition is a project that, uh, you know, from a capital improvement or capital uh, cost standpoint, it's not a huge cost to install uh, some sort of fair ferrochloride or alum uh, dosage equipment, um, there would be a continued um, chemical cost obviously associated with that, um, but that nece wouldn't necessarily be uh, more costly. All right, thanks. Uh, kind of follow-up looks like to that. Will Eagle actually pursue any of these alternative options or they're only presented to refute the proposal? Yeah, so this is Phil again. Um, no, we're certainly willing to work with um, the county on any of these alternatives. Um, we are already working with them on the in-system storage alternative upstream. Um, we're, we're happy to continue working with them on any green infrastructure or post-construction requirements on their stormwater permit. Um, so we're always willing to work on alternatives with them. Okay, thanks, Bill. Uh, looks like we got someone else with their hand up, uh, Kevin O'Brien. Kevin, I just unmuted your mic. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, I'm very curious why a public park that's really heavily used and very much enjoyed would be sacrificed for this. It's a waterfront park. It's one of the few rather primitive kind of natural areas that people can go free and enjoy fishing, walking, playing uh, with the dog, taking the family for a picnic. I look at it every day and it's so utilized. I'm seeing boats and everything. It seems to me that that's just a terrible, terrible use of the park. There'll be a bit left, but it'll be next to a surrounded uh, open trench or basin or something. It's a beautiful place and I think it would really mess it up. I hope they don't do that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. O'Brien. I'll get a couple questions that came in through the question box here. Uh, can you explain any ways that the community can help reduce the amount of runoff during a large weather event? Yeah, so maybe Dan or Laura, you want to talk about the different ways that green infrastructure help reduce stormwater flow to an RTB? Yeah, so um, so how to, to how to reduce runoff is basically you know your um, your parking lots, your uh, sidewalks. All that stuff is is considered impervious um, surface. So what that means is water basically falls on that and then gets directed off um, and um, large times goes to some sort of catch basin and then gets conveyed to the combined sewer system. So what an individual homeowner can do is um, you know try to decrease the amount of impervious area on your on your property as much as possible. Um, you could you know, install uh, rain barrels are, are uh, another good way to uh, to get the to capture that flow, um, you, and then you can reuse it rather than um, that all that runoff from the roof again an impervious uh, surface um, being directed to a combined sewer system. So uh, if you can try to decrease the amount of of hard impervious surface, that would have an impact. All right, thanks. Sorry, I just forgot to unmute myself. And then one other thing I wanted to that that could I could point out too is you know there's a lot of um, especially in you know older communities um, you have foundation drains around your property. Um, a lot of these foundation drains and or sump pumps are tied into um, tied into the to the sewer. Um, if you can direct some of that, especially uh, sump pumps out and 
to direct it out to the uh, road where it has a chance to infiltrate into the ground, that's another way that uh, an individual homeowner can make a positive impact to the sewer system. All right, thanks. Uh, another question from the question box. When will the glaring problem of open county dumping into Lake St. Clair be addressed? So Jim, maybe I'll start um, answering this question and then I'd like Laura or Dan to chime in um, as well about the uh, GWK RTB. The GWK RTB permit um, is also a permit that has been um, determined to adequately protect um, surface water downstream. Now it is a really large facility, that's true. Um, in the recent permit that we issued, um, we also put a green infrastructure program requirement um, into that permit on the upstream side. Um, so I think it's important to note that we are looking for them to start reducing stormwater flow into the basin. We, not, we are not asking them to install additional storage um, at the basin or downstream of the facility, but we are, are asking them to look into green infrastructure upstream of the facility. So what you see from the GWK facility, though it's a large discharge, it's a large treated discharge, but we are asking them under the last permit to do green infrastructure on the upstream side. Laura or Dan, if you have anything to offer, maybe talk about the recent 2005 um, corrections that were done to that basin. Yeah, I, I can talk about those. So the in in 2005 ish, um, they did a, a major capital improvement uh, project to that basin where they added uh, trying to think how many million gallons of storage. Um, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but what, what they did is they added additional storage. They put in an, an intermediate uh, weir section in. They um, additionally, a lot of the storm sewers, uh, so let me step back. The city of Madison Heights, um, a large portion of the city of Madison Heights is, and that's where the GWK basin sits, is, uh, is separated. So pr prior to 2005, they had, um, a lot of the storm sewers coming in uh, to the, basically to the basin um, at different spots along the, the large uh, stretch of the basin. Um, so what they did is they separated those out and now those storm sewers come in um, just downstream of the effluent weir of the basin, um, just basically right before it daylights at, um, at 13 Mile and DeQuinder. And additionally, as part of that project, they actually uh, made uh, uh, huge improvements to their uh, chlorine feed system, um, which allows them to uh, better better um, disinfect the wastewater um, associated with that. So, all right, thanks. Uh, we did have I saw somebody with their hand up, but I'm not sure if it went down or not. Uh, Richard Best, I muted your line because I saw your hand went up and down. Do, do you have a question? Uh, well, yes, I do have a question. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'm a 29-year resident of Harbour Place, right next door to this. And uh, we've heard these statements that, quote, everybody agrees that this is a good project. Well, we've done some pretty informal, totally non-scientific interviews with people who are users of this area who go fishing, who use the launch ramp. And we have yet to find anybody who actually knew that this, this was even a project. So um, the political side of this is getting completely outside, to my view, of the actual needs of, of real people who live next door to the area or actually um, uh, use it. So is, is there every, any evidence that, quote, Everybody agrees this is a good project. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, so I, I basically just want to respond to that. Um, uh, we appreciate all comments at a, at a public meeting and public hearing, um, and that's why we hold that's why we hold public uh, meetings and public hearings. So, in terms of okay, Mr. So Beth's question about the, um, go ahead about the. Uh, agreement about is it a good is that what your question was mr best 
Yeah, but does actually, is there any evidence that everybody does agree? Because on our completely non-scientific local study, nobody apart from us who live here seems to be aware that this is even going on. So, Phil, or anybody want to address that? Is I mean, is a question? Yeah. So let me let me talk a little bit about um, the purpose of tonight's meeting. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to get comments on our proposed denial of the permit. So we appreciate all comments. Um, uh, it, it's it's not a scientific poll um, that we're doing. It's not a vote process. Um, we're we're taking the technical comments that we receive. Um, we also understand the need of this. Um, of the recreational opportunities that are provided, um, the boating opportunities that are provided, the habitat that it provides for fish um, downstream. Um, that's one of our obligations under our um, NARIPA, our state law, as well as the Clean Water Act to make sure that these are complied with as well. So that's, that's, that's the actual reason for our, our proposed denial of this permit, but we appreciate all comments. Okay, thanks. Uh, going to our question box, uh, do you know how many people are currently fishing in this sewage discharge canal that you want to protect? So maybe Andy can talk a little bit about um, the uses of Lake St. Clair and uh, what he's seen in that area. Yeah, sure. This is Andy Hartz. I mean, the, the canal itself is um, one of its most important functions is, as a launch ramp. It's open to the general public. Other launch ramps in the city of St. Clair Shores are open to residents only. Because of the way the um, original um, facility at this location was permitted, the park that was mentioned before is, is actually on state of Michigan bottomlands. And that's why that park property is open to the public. And that's also why the, the boat ramp is open to the public. Um, you know, the canals are the first waters to warm up and the first waters, in the spring to warm up and so the the canals around the lake have uh, in some sense taken over the lost functions that we've lost from some of the um, most of the coastal wetland loss on lake st Clair. so if you think about the canals along st Clair shores and the mile roads and up around harrison township um, you know people see turtles in those and young of the year bluegills and that's where a lot of uh, some fish spawning occurs and so for a lot of for a, a, a good part of the lake you know, obviously the canals can't replace lost functions and values from coastal wetland, but I, I don't think the canals should be overlooked as a for their habitat value. And um, and certainly people fish the canal um, just from shore. You know, it's a public fishing area. So, um, you know, the discharges from the facility uh, not that often, and um, you know, the the fish likely move out of that canal when that occurs and. Once that's over, the fish move back into that canal. So having been a boat well owner at Shore Club for many years, um, you could always tell when it discharged because the algae was on the rock, either on the rocks or the algae was not on the rocks. But the algae came back to the rocks quick and the fish come back quick. So canals are important. Thanks, Andy. Uh, another question on our question box uh, says, we are vehemently, vehemently opposed to this project and wondering if you deny this permit does it stop the project if it is challenged will you will your authority stand so the project cannot go forward as proposed so maybe it'd be best for Chris Alexander to talk about what a permit denial means um, if the permits denied then um, the project what happens to the project hi there can you can you hear me Jim yeah we can hear you Okay, thank you. Um, this this project, if if denied, if um, it could be challenged, that's that's part of the um, administrative process. So um, the the uh, the proposed denial could could be challenged. Um, there there's a process to to deal with that. So for a while, the project um, would be uh, stalled until we work through the administrative process. Um, and your your second question: Would our decision um, stand? Uh, the department, any decision the department makes on a permit, be it an issuance, a decision to issue or deny, the department would defend. And so um, that would be, we would move forward to defend the decision that, that we made. I, I couldn't predict whether it would stand, that would be settled through the administrative process or um, the court 
proceeding, um, but, but that would be the process as, as outlined under the law. Okay, thanks, Chris. <clears throat> Next question coming in here. What are the options for expanding the existing Chapitan Basin without taking the waterfront park? So maybe Deanne can talk about this, but there is an area between the RTB, the concrete RTB and the gate structure that was agreed to in 2003 that established where waters of the state start. So maybe Deanne or Laura can talk about that. Yeah, so so the existing, um, so they could expand the current RTB up to, like Phil said, that proposed gate structure. There is the potential to widen it a little bit, I believe. You know, some of that might require additional property acquisition um, by the county if they see fit. Um, uh, but there is uh, some space there where uh, they could uh, increase the size of the the concrete uh, retention treatment basin um, within the existing property uh, of the Chapitan Basin. All right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, next question why do you call it okay okay why do you call it this a new sewage canal if whatever is released into it has already been skimmed treated and sediments already settled isn't really a full treated freshwater canal i'm just reading it as it came in so yeah so uh, maybe amanda can talk a little bit about how this is a protected water of the state um, it protects all designated uses um, in that canal, and that's what the county proved to us um, over the last 15 years um, since the last treatment expansion. So, the, hi, this is Amanda. Um, so, they were talking previously, and we did have a slide um, that shows where the current gate structure is located. So, up to that gate structure, is part of the the current storage for the basin beyond that gate structure are waters of the state um, so those are fresh public waters of the state between the current gate structure and and the lake Thanks, and those Amanda. Are, like phil said protected um, for our designated uses so used by the public um, yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Got a couple more hands up here. Uh, Susan K. Susan, I just unmuted your line. You can unmute yourself and go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, is uh, is this the largest chlorination basin that's ever been attempted in the state of Michigan? And is there a plan? for uh, what happens if it doesn't work. I mean, it's a big, it's a biochemistry experiment, it sounds like, and we're just curious. We also live next door to the um, proposed expansion. And what if it doesn't work? What happens? So maybe, Dan, you can talk about the, the, the th two or three largest basins um, in Southeast Michigan, and then talk about disinfection. Yeah, um, so the the largest retention treatment basin uh, in Southeast Michigan is uh, the GWK Basin. And uh, that one is 120, 28 million gallons of storage, um, which is significantly way larger than, than Chapton. Um, ad additionally, uh, the city or city of Detroit, Great Lakes Water Authority operates uh, the Connor Creek Retention Basin. Um, what's the what's the size of that one, Phil? Uh, 30 million gallons of uh, within the basin. Okay, 30 million gallons of within the basin. So that is uh, th those are those are a lot larger retention treatment basins um, that are currently you know constructed in Southeast Michigan. There are some other ones that are are, are probably lar that are larger too. But uh, as it relates to your question on um, you know, potential of it not working. I think that 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 is some of some of our concerns that we outlined in this presentation with the potential for you know regrowth of of bacteria and viruses, 
the ability to, um, or the, the, it's sitting in there settling out solids, potentially um, subsequent discharge events uh, uh, are required that, or, or would potentially discharge those solids. So, um, so yeah, that, that those are definitely some of our concerns um, associated with this proposed project. The, the um, larger ones, are they similar in design? I mean, uh, from reading your materials, I was under the impression that this was uh, somewhat different in the way the lake interacts with it and that um, the, the proximity to the density of the population here was, is also a consideration. We have major concerns about the spread of disease and environmental and health hazards that are related to this that you guys have um, pointed out. And uh, we are just concerned that this, um, that this is not gonna work and, and, that, and that there is not a plan B. I guess so, that's um, oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. So what I'll say, the existing retention tree, chapter in retention treatment basin is, is is very similar to the others in that you know it provides you know screening, settling, skimming, and disinfection. Um, however, the proposed project, what what is being proposed by the county of having um, open air storage coupled with uh, wetland treatment. That is definitely something that is not has not been approved, um, you know, in the state. So all these retention treatment basins um, that have been constructed, uh, you know, out in the collection system have been required to be, you know, concrete uh, concrete basins. Um, they have also been required to install um, odor control systems. You know, in the event that that odors, uh, you know, do do happen. So I, I think this is something uh, that that isn't uh, that hasn't been proposed at any other basin um, yet. And, and I want to add just a little bit to that. Um, most of the other basins are designed to provide a quiescent area for where when the sewage comes in um, to be treated. This is a very narrow structure that extends further downstream. Um, so the ability to settle um, uh, isn't similar to um, what's in a current RTB. All right, thanks guys. Uh, we gotta keep moving on because we got quite a few more people, questions here. Uh, another person with their hand up, Mark Balon or Balon, go ahead. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Great, Th thanks for taking my call. Thanks for having this uh, program. And uh, I just I just think there's a lot of uh, misinformation. Um, we're from the Waterfront Environmental Committee, so we're trying to get clean water throughout the you know throughout Lake St. Clair. We clean up the beaches. We've cleaned up 600 tons of trash off the beaches. We know it's collecting. So that's why we really believe these programs are are good to to do things cost effectively. So my question really comes down to I know there's a lot of a lot of misfunded. I guess uh, messages coming back and forth because right now the existing Chapitan it discharges uh, the same kind of water that we're planning that's going to be was planned on being in the the, the Chapitan discharge, and so that has more of a chance with people fishing and I, I was just there last weekend with my daughter and it's a nice place but again there's more of an opportunity with the new program why wouldn't you want to support a program that is going to protect and stop people from going into that area so that the water can go through that area and be held temporarily i guess that's why i'm just don't understand why you're saying that it's an area cesspool where viruses and stuff can grow but there's more of a chance for viruses to grow in the current condition of it because flows can go through there and people are walking through that same area. Under the new plan, it's gonna be a restricted area, but a nicer area for everybody to enjoy. That's all. Yeah, maybe I'll start and uh, Dan or Amanda can talk a bit more about the project, but in honesty, what happens in that storage area, that 1,500 or 1,400 feet of additional land um, or additional water that's taken um, to construct the storage facility is, it's normally going to be in the dry condition. Um, so it's not going to be in a condition where it could be used as a water of the state. 
It would no longer provide recreational opportunities. It would no longer provide a habitat for fish. So maybe you guys can talk a little bit about the project and how it would function. Yeah, so um, I guess I'll go. Um, so, you know, the, the proposal is to, you know, move the, the gate structure as Amanda showed in, in the presentation. So like Phil was saying that that 1400 feet of, of the Chapman Canal uh, would no longer be uh, no, no longer be afforded for recreational opportunities. So additionally, um, you know, in the event the seven or so times a year when when the Chapman treatment basin discharges currently, um, you know, those gates get opened up and the flow does go out into the Chapman Chapman Canal out to Lake St. Clair. Um, that water does mix with with uh, Lake St. Clair, and then um, then gets uh, gets mixed, and uh, shortly after the the discharge event ends. So um, the I think uh, your your what your question was that this treated wastewater was already in the canal. However, it does mix with Lake St. Clair um, and gets diluted. All right, and thanks. Andy, Samantha. So, and I think Andy had some good comments on that as well. So, in the canal currently, it returns back to its more natural state and how it functions soon after the discharge. Um, so, with the proposed structure as it is, it would never go back to that canal. Like, it would never be able to be accessed um, by the public again. So, that is one of the concerns that we have with the project. All right, thanks. Uh, another question from the question board. Uh, what plans do you have to restore the Hardin Lake coastland? Are you planning on spending state funds to do this? So actually two questions. What plans do you have to restore the Hardin Lake coastland? And are you spent, planning on spending state funds to do, to do this? So maybe, so maybe Andy can respond to some of these questions. Sure. Um, you know, significant federal dollars have been expended on, on Lake St. Clair, as well as the um, Clinton River watershed through the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative grant program. You know, coastal wetlands have been um, restored, enhanced at Metro Beach, Metro Park, the Harley Ensign launch site at the end of the Clinton River, up the, um, up the Clinton River spillway. Um, we have actually additional application just recently. I met with folks from Macomb County who were talking about uh, building a small wetland um, at the end of a discharge facility in St. Clair Shores. Not a big one, but at the at the um, BFW post at um, St. Clair Shores. So there are different federal and state grant opportunities, but obviously, you know, um, they're limited by by land ownership, and uh, a lot of the public park um, and municipal um, cities are are doing this. This is uh, Chesterfield Township is under undertaking a very large thing at um, Brandenburg Park. So, um, you know, restoring wetland on a lake that is is very armored. Um, you know, it's a big lake, and the the steel. Uh, steel seawalls have been there for some time um, so you know but we're making progress on that and you know every every little bit helps I think but I, I'm not I'm not aware of any huge state initiative to um, fund softening of the shoreline on Lake St. Clair okay thanks uh, another question in the question box you mentioned that the proposed expansion is unprecedented. Could you please discuss that further? So maybe I'll start. Um, it's unprecedented in the fact that it's uh, adequately treated based and it's meeting its MPDES requirements. Um, it's protecting our designated uses downstream. Unprecedented in the terms of taking um, a waters of the state after something has already complied with our uh, pollution requirements under our state law. So it meets state and federal law, it meets water quality standards, it protects designated uses, it protects public health. It's unprecedented in the sense that it takes 
um, uh, takes additional state water to expand a facility. All right, thanks. Yep. Um, do any other basins exist on a peninsula out in the lake? Maybe Dan, you can try to answer that. I I, I can't think of any, but uh, yeah, I can't I can't either. Um, I can't think of any. Okay. All right. So next question, we got time for a couple more questions. Um, this one's kind of long, so bear with me. Um, it says there there is a proposal to expand a fishing pier four miles north at another St. Clair Shores Park that would surpass what is available at the Chapitan Pier. Don't the benefits of reducing sewage discharge outweigh this inconvenience? Doesn't this proposal allow for flushing after a storage event? Is it true that the stormwater collection is 95% rainwater? And if not, please provide a methodology that could prove contrary. So I'll start it out and then Amanda or Chris or anyone can chime in. Um, our obligations under our rules, our obligations under our water quality standards, under our state law, are to protect um, receiving waters. We're also required to protect um, and make sure that there's adequate pollution control to make sure designated uses are protected. Um, so our obligations are to protect this um, like any other water in the state. We don't have the ability in the state of Michigan to look at um, what certain waters we can say um, should be written off. Um, we protect all the waters in the state um, um, and we make sure that there's adequate pollution control, upland per pollution control to make sure that we don't use waters of the state. So our obligations are to protect this channel. All right, thanks, Phil. Uh, what, one more question that one more person's got their hand up and then we'll switch over to the hearings. So uh, Richard Best, do you have your hand up? I think I just unmuted you. Go ahead. Mr. Best. Okay. No. Hello, Mr. Best. Did you have your hand? You have your hand up. You have a question? No, I didn't think I did. I think it's okay. supposedly down. Okay. okay, that's fine. I just I'll put it down for you. Thank you. All right. So yeah, that happens sometimes. Um, looking to see, and hey, we're timing is pretty good here. I'm looking to see if there's any more questions in the question box, and there is not. Um, as well as I'm checking out our board here to see if anybody else with their hand raised. Um, one thing I do want to mention, I think I mentioned it earlier, but for those that joined late, under the handouts tab on your toolbar, there's a lot of handouts related to tonight's meeting. Um, one of them is the presentation that Amanda and Dan just gave. Another one is a frequently asked questions document. So you might want to take a look at that. Uh, to, uh, if you, to address some of the other questions you might have after the meeting too, as well as a lot of other good information in there. Uh, so, Phil, are you ready to move on to the hearing then? It looks like we're ready to go. Yes, I think so, thank you. Okay, all right. So with that, thank you everybody for your participation in the questions and answer session tonight. Um, now we're gonna move into the more the formal part of this evening and that's the actual public comment part of the meeting and so i got a few things i'm going to read off here for everybody and then we'll start taking names to do comments so um, the public hearing will be used to take comment on the proposed denial for the national pollutant discharge and elimination system permit modification for those of you online you can provide your comment to us in two ways you can type your comment into the question box on your GoToWebinar toolbar. Make sure you include your name and organization you would like affiliated with your comment. The comments th submitted through the question box will be submitted for the record. So I'll just to make sure you know this, I'm not going to read your comments to type in, but we will submit them for the record. Um, if, also, if you want to make a comment, you can click the raise hand icon on your GoToWebinar toolbar, and we will call on an unmute your line 
so that you can make your comment. Now, for, the, for this part, each person will have up to five minutes in which to make your comment. And uh, Laura Verona, who is one of our panelists, she's going to help me keep time. So Laura will be breaking in if you're reaching that one minute mark and if, when, when your time's up. So note that uh, several people pre-registered for the meeting and indicated they would like to make a comment. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to go through those people first, and then we will open up to everyone else that might want to make a comment. And I want to make another important note, and that's that. Tonight is not the only time you can submit a comment. The public comment period is open till June 23rd, 2020. If you'd rather submit a written comment, you can do so up until uh, June 23rd. And Phil, can you clarify, is that midnight on June 23rd? Um, Chris can better oh, Chris. Uh, respond to that, but I think it is. Yes, that's correct. Okay, I didn't have that in my notes here, but up till midnight on June 23rd, you can make a comment. Uh, written comments may be submitted online in our My Waters database, and directions can be found in on the screen here or in that handout that's in the, the handouts tab. Um, and you can also see in the chat box there's a link directly to that page where you can make comments. And comments can also be submitted to Matt Steron at the address on your screen, and I'll read that off. It's the Matt Steron Water Resources Division, EGLE, Eagle. P.O. Box 30458, Lansing, Michigan, 48909-7958. Or at, and I'll read off Matt's email. It's not on here, but I'll read off his email address. It's Starin, H, or Starin, S-T-A-R-O-N, then M as in Michael. So S-T-A-R-O-N as in Nancy, M as in Michael, Michigan.gov. Uh, this hearing is being recorded and your comments will be part of the information that EGLE will consider in the proposed de denial for the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permit modification. Comments received, or yes, comments received will not be responded to at this time, but will be included in response to public comment documents and be part of the, per the permit record. All comments and information received will be available in MyWaters and on our online database. And just to remind everybody, the comment period is open until June 23rd, 2020. Uh, there may be people that are just calling in tonight using your phone only. And just for those people, just know that uh, you can only listen in to this. You can't actually make a comment because it doesn't allow you to do that. Uh, but you have those other means in which to make a written comment up until June 23rd. Okay. So with that, what, what I have here is I've got um, a listing of people who pre-registered that requested to make a comment um, during that. And so I'm going to be doing that first. So I'm going to take a look at it. And what I do is that I have to go through my actual people that are on and that are present in the meeting. And if you're present, I will unmute you. So on um, the past meeting, some people say they want to make a comment, but they're not present. So uh, they can't make a comment. So I'm looking at my list here. And by the way, uh, Laura Verona, you're on there, right? Laura? Laura Verona, just checking your mic is muted. You're our timekeeper for tonight. So, Phil, yeah. are you there? Hi, Jim. Yeah. Laura, yes, are you there? Uh, Christine. Muted, right? Okay, Laura, are you there? Yes. Okay, good. All right, you were muted. All right, so Laura, oh, you, you you are my timekeeper, so I wanted to make sure that you absolutely. Hear us. All right, I can. so you're gonna so you're gonna let people know when they have one minute left, and then when their time's up, people start wrapping up. Exactly. Right. Thank okay. you. All right, great. So I'm gonna go through my list here, and uh, the first first person I have that's indicated they want to make a comment is uh, Candace Miller. So I am going to unmute your line, ma'am, and you can go ahead. You are unmute, you are unmuted. Hi, I think um, Candace, is, she called in. I think she's trying to get on the webinar. Um, maybe you can go to another person for a moment. Oh, sure. Yeah, I can come back. So I will Thank you. come back to you. No problem. All right. Uh, next person on my list is uh, Representative Kevin Hertel. So Rep Hertel, I see you there and I, 
just unmuted your line, so go ahead. You just need to unmute your line. All right. I'm getting to know technology pretty well in this environment. So Okay, we can hear you. <laughs> Well, I just want to thank you for the opportunity. And I do want to thank the employees at Eagle who have been uh, great to communicate with my office and other legislators from Macomb County as we uh, look at this issue. And I'll be very brief uh, in the interest of everybody's time this evening. But, uh, you know, this is an issue that has been very important, not only to the residents of my district in St. Clair Shores and East Point, but important to the residents across Macomb County. Uh, sir, I think you just broke up. And, um, you know, along the shoreline, uh, it's no surprise every spring uh, and summer what we see uh, accumulate along our shorelines. And we firmly believe that a lot of that is due to these combined sewer overflows. And uh, I applaud the work of Candace Miller to try to clean up uh, those overflows in Macomb County. Uh, and, uh, you know, this project specifically is something that I believe is an innovative way to looking at solving a problem. From my perspective, and I, I understand the concerns of the project, we've talked about them at length, uh, and I hear the, the, the concerns from uh, all levels, but I think it's something that's worth trying. And if it doesn't work, and if some of the concerns come to fruition, we can mitigate those concerns. Uh, so. You know, for, to be able to do a project for $30 million to solve part of a problem that if you really were to solve the entire thing by separating sewer systems across that part of St. Clair Shores and East Point, you're looking at, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, whereas $30 million all in can solve a large portion of the project. And I think that's an innovative, innovative and efficient way to try to address it. And that's what my taxpayers uh, in my district are looking for. They want solutions to problems. And, you know, unfortunately, given the times, we don't have hundreds of millions of dollars laying around. So, you know, I hope that we can look at this as an innovative way to address a problem that's been plaguing Lake St. Clair for decades and move this in the right direction. And I look forward to the continued conversation to attempt to do that. So thank you for the time and I'll uh, let others chime in. Uh, I'll, I'll stop talking now. All right, thank you, sir. Okay. Um, next person that I have on my list, and just to, uh, I see that uh, Candace Miller did have, she was on, but if you do get your audio working, just feel free to type something into the question box and I'll be sure to go back to you. All right, so uh, looking at my list here, my next person up is uh, John Karen. John Karen, it's gonna take me a minute to find your name here and you are unmuted, Mr. Karen, go ahead. Thank you. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, John Karen, I'm Sinclair Shore City Councilman, as well as a one of the board directors of the Southeast Macomb Sanitary District, which is uh, very much involved with this project. Uh, just wanted to add for the record, uh, several of the suggestions that were made about what else could be done, um, we're already trying to do. Um, you know, we've updated our storm sewer regulations in the city of St. Clair Shores uh, a few years back in order to increase on-site storage at uh, business properties, but that's not going to be enough. We have a rain barrel program in the city. We sell rain barrels through our Waterfront Environmental Advisory Committee, uh, through our DPW to our residents, but that's not going to be enough. You know, we're working to try to add green infrastructure. Actually, we even applied for a grant and was denied from the DNR trying to add green infrastructure to our nine Mac business area in order to absorb more water that rather than it going down to the Chapman Basin, but that's not going to be enough. You know, St. Clair Shores and East Point, we're fully developed cities. We do not have new developers coming in to remake great, you know, lengths of land to create more on-site storage, more upstream storage uh, for the stormwater work runoff. If you look at an overlay of what this area is, these are residential homes. They're homes, front yards, backyards. There's a lot of area that's already absorbing water. 
the water that Chapman is, is capturing now are basically from streets and from sidewalks, like you said, but that is not a majority of land. We have the majority of land is actual lawn absorbing water. That's not enough. That's why we want to go ahead in terms of the St. Clair Shores City Council, unanimous support for this, Macomb Border Commissioners, unanimous support for this to expand the Chapman Basin so we can reduce the overflows into the lake, which even with some of the comments from Eagle today, you talk about how even when we do a discharge, while the canal eventually gets back to being a eco-friendly area for fish, which means we are doing damage to the canal. We are doing damage to the lake every time we discharge. We don't want to, We and we wanna fund it. We're willing to have our ratepayers in our cities pay for this project because it's what's best for the lake. So I would be asking Eagle to reconsider their going forward with this denial um, so that we can go ahead and have a better lake and we can do our part to make Lake St. Clair cleaner and better for everybody. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. And uh, I just wanna remind everybody, uh, just like Mr. Karen, please uh, make sure you just restate your name and uh, any organization that you're affiliated with that you wanna make a comment for, if that's the case. Okay, so on my list, the next person up uh, is Shannon Shunk. So I'm gonna see if she is in attendance. And I do not see her in attendance. So we'll move on to our next person, uh, Ann Gilmore, requested to make a comment. Um, and there is no Ann Gilmore in attendance either. Again, I'm just gonna move down my list. And again, these are people who pre-registered. When they registered, they indicated they wanted to make a comment, but uh, I'm checking to see if they're actually in attendance. Uh, next person up is Les Day. Les Day, um, checking. And uh, I do not see a Les Day in attendance here tonight. For some reason, you're logged on under a different name. Just go ahead and uh, type that into the question box and I'll make sure I call on you. So that can happen. Uh, next person I have up on my list is uh, Penny Pesta. Penny Pesta. Checking. And I do not see a Penny Pesta in attendance either. So eventually we'll hit somebody <laughs> that requested here. Uh, next person. Uh, Nicole D D Dwyer, Nicole Dwyer, uh, Nicole Dwyer is not in attendance on my list here, okay. Uh, Mark Milan, so I know Mark Milan is in attendance because we heard from him earlier, so uh, Mark, I just, um, Unmute is your line, so you can go ahead and go. Okay, great. Thank you for having us. Uh, just want to point out that my name is Mark Ballen with the Waterfront Environmental Committee. I'm chairman of the committee, been with them for 12 years now. Our committee has been in existence for 20 years, and we've been studying the same problems that we have observed with the lake. Matter of fact, I've cleaned up beach shores with Kevin Hertel for 10 years, shoulder to shoulder, so, and John Karen as well. So we do know and are pretty familiar because we've been putting in a lot of sweat equity on trying to help out the lake. And the best thing I could do is say, we understand there's different ideas out there, but when you really look at the dollars to be spent and the, the engineering side of it, I am a professional engineer and. 20 states, so I do understand that there's uh, some pros and cons, but I really believe the costs are much more favorable for this project for what we're going to get and what it's going to do to help clean up the lake. And all I can do is re review a letter that we sent to uh, Liesl Clark. I sent it twice, once before the corona and once uh, just a few weeks ago to make sure you got it but the St. Clair Shores Waterfront Environmental Committee, uh, we fully support the Macomb County Drain Commissioner's proposed 
Chapitan Expansion Overflow Basin. We, look, we believe the project is vital in providing cleaner water for our environment and our community efforts to keep Lake Sinclair clean. This proposed Chapman facility will provide improved retainage for unnecessary overflows to the lake and our pleasing area to naturally manage overflows for others to understand. And we plan to try, if it goes through, to promote these ideas for the community, for the children, which we have many on our committee. Many students are on our committee and we wanna pass on good managed flows uh, to them so they can get out to future generations. We do this by providing educational support and other programs, and this is why we really believe this program is well worth it. Feel free to give us a call anytime, and we have a website if anybody has any additional questions, and we really would like to get other people's input to this process. We're all trying to do the same thing, we, and we know Eagle is as well. We just hope you approve the Chapman project. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. Um, next person I have up here is Kevin O'Brien. Kevin, I just unmuted your line, so go ahead. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, I'm a physician. Uh, I have a degree in biology with an interest in actually wetland and shoreline biology, and I practiced in Macomb County for 24 years. And currently I have the uh, position also of president of Harbor Place One Association. I speak on behalf of myself and the association. Harbor Place unanimously supports Eagle's plan to deny the Chapitan expansion. We certainly understand the need to continue environmental projects for the lake, but we don't believe that this is a high impact project for $30 million. Second piece is we find it absolutely egregious to take public waterfront, not just public land, but public land and waterfront to use for a trench, a canal, 10 feet deep, 1400 or so feet long, 160, 70, 80 feet wide, and fill in waterfront that's actually turned into a bit of a wetlands already and just get rid of it. What's going to happen with that is it's going to take combined sewer overflow and we all know it's settled, it's treated with chlorine. The biggest concern is it's an eyesore. If you look at the current ditch, if you will, the CSO canal hidden nicely behind a lot of cement, it's a mess. But anyway, the whole point of this is it does not cure the problem. It does perhaps make a dent in the overflows by about 50%. But we're taking a park away from our community, not just St. Clair Shores residents, but Macomb County residents. And frankly, most people can just walk in and enjoy it. And as I look out there right now, there are a number of people fishing and just having a nice day. $30 million is the cost of the project, but what's the land worth on top of it? I mean, this is the people's property. We can talk about the ditch, the sewage overflows, but I think that's been adequately discussed. The issue with the, uh, the residual sediment in the bottom of this structure that will be dry, will usually actually be damp, is real. That essentially is a culture dish. And I know that Mr. Ballant had mentioned that the current status is much more dangerous, but as a physician, I would disagree because damp, uh, sludge, if you will, that cannot be completely flushed out is a perfect culture medium. So this isn't a fix, this is a bypass. This isn't a wetland, it's a retention ditch. I know we don't wanna call it a basin anymore, so call it what you like. Semantics don't matter. I would also want to comment that not only Harbor Place One is opposed to this, but Riviera Terrace is absolutely opposed to this. We have discussed this with their board. We've walked around with the president of the association. They were really, really upset about it. Unfortunately, their president can't be with us tonight. Uh, and she also is a biologist with a degree in land use. So in summary, we think this is 
a misguided project, the aim of which is laudable. We think it's a waste of money and taking public land and public waterfront away is absolutely unacceptable. And thank you for your time. I appreciate your listening. All right, thank you, sir. All right, we're gonna go back to Candace Miller. I've heard that sh we might be able to get her on. So I just unmuted your line. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, barely. Welcome to the webinar. You have entered as an attendee in listen-only mode. Are you able to hear me? Uh, we can hear you slightly. You just need to speak up, I think. Okay, I'm going to try to go. speak as, as, as much as I can here. I, I have a problem. I'm sorry, we can't uh, hear you. Uh, so, in a, I'll let people know this. I'm sorry we can't hear you right now. Um, there's a couple different ways for people to uh, unmute your mic or use your microphone. There's a, under the audio tab, there is a link where you can uh, put yeah, in so your... Uh, I'm hoping that they saw my message and can just call Hello? on me and I can let you speak through there. Hello? Okay, well, well, we'll come back to uh, Candace Miller uh, in just a moment. So I'm going to just. Here, here, here. Um, so, again, if you want to make a comment and you just want to make sure that under the audio tab on GoToWebinar toolbar, there is an option uh, to choose which microphone you're using. You want to make sure that's the right one, or there's a phone number you can call in as well if you want to switch to phone, and, and that sometimes works as well. So. Sorry about that. We'll check back in in just a moment. Uh, thanks for hanging in there with us. All right, so I'm just gonna go through a couple other people really quick here. Uh, next person I have on my list is David Turner. So I'm looking to see if there's a David Turner and I do see him there. So uh, David Turner, go ahead. All right, thanks very much. Um, good evening, my name's Dave Turner. I'm the president of the Harbor Place Three Condo Association. Kevin is president of the Harbor Place One Condo Association. We have two associations just because of the way the project was constructed years ago. Um, our units on our marina border the Chipotan property on its north side, and we've been here close to 30 years. Uh, some of our units are as close as 40 feet from the edge of the proposed open air storage basement. So this project has will have a big effect on us. First, let me start by saying that I, my board, and my owners fully support Eagle's denial of Macomb County's application for permits to construct the open air storage basin, and here's why. Some of this is going to be what Kevin said to you before, but I think it's, it's it, it bears repeating, at least from Harbor Place, from my, from my co-owners. First, we see the lagoon is likely turning out to be an eyesore on the waterfront. Uh, the state has rejected the claim that it would be a wetlands, wetlands on some scientific grounds, which was presented earlier. Therefore, the existing one-acre storage basin, basin, which was completed in 2005, is really the only comparable facility that we can look at to envision the outcome of the project. It's a fenced, as Kevin said, it's a fenced-in open ditch with unmanicured un underbrush and scrub trees on the sides. The flat bottom is gray mud and crushed stone covered with shallow murky water. In our opinion, seven acres of that is an eyesore. Second, as Kevin said, it doesn't make sense to us to sacrifice the public waterfront recreational ran for a lagoon which is used 21 days a year when there are other ways to improve it. Today it's a waterfront park. It's a beautiful uh, peninsula covered with hundreds of pine trees. Tomorrow to be replaced by a seven acre no man's land where citizens can't go, along with a half, tiny half acre public park out at the end. Um, Eagle has offered a lot of alternatives to spending money to clean up the lake. Sir, I think we lost you. You, you muted yourself. Mr. Turner. Uh, Mr. Turner, you, am yeah. I unmuted? Yeah, you think you accidentally hit mute while you were talking. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, sorry. I think that was on your end there. Yep. 
All right, I said it's unreasonable to impose these human health risks on us. Uh, the biologist for your biology review cites large amounts of chlorine breaking down, a nuisance insect breeding ground, and water and solids spread through wildlife and pets as potential uh, uh, risks to human health. Finally, these changes to the waterfront next door to us cannot help but detract from the appeal of our property to a potential buyer. Today, we adjoin a park and a covered storage facility that looks like a large parking lot. Tomorrow, we'd still adjoin the parking lot, but also eight acres of open air temporary storage lagoon. That can't be good for our property values. Again, we strongly against issuing these permits and we thank you very much for taking the time to listen to us tonight. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. Um, the next person I have on my list is um, Veronica Kleinfeld. I'm checking to see if you are in attendance, so bear with me here. Um, I do not see her in attendance. Okay, so I'm gonna go back, and again, remember if you wanna make a comment, uh, that does that, those are all of our pre-registered commenters if you'd like to make a comment please raise your hand or again if you don't want it to speak online you can just type your comment into the question box and that'll be as well submitted for the record so i'm going to um i'm going to check in again with uh candace miller to see um if either she or our staff person's on the line uh just unmute your line Hello? Hi. Yeah, Candace is trying to uh, to speak, and okay. for some reason the it won't let her speak through the webinar for some reason. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. Is there no way that she can call in and speak? Yes. If yeah. you are logged in, there is under the audio tab. There's a number that once you're logged in, you call into, and, and you can use your phone for audio. Um, we can attempt, if you put your phone up next, if that doesn't work, if you could want to try to put the phone up next to the speaker, it's possible we might be able to capture the audio. Okay, let me, uh, hold on one second, please. Sure. Um, if she has that audio pin, can she speak through that? Um, we can attempt it. Okay. Hold on one second, please. Okay, she's going to be calling in with that PIN number in just a second, okay? It's going to, I think it's under my name, uh, Emily Engelman. Name? Emily Engelman, okay. I'm her assistant, yeah. Thank okay, you. I can um, look to unmute that one then. What's that? Are you logged in, ma'am? Yeah, she, she's calling in right now on this uh, specific line. Uh, so she just uh, logged in with that PIN code. So if she can uh, be unmuted, that would be great. Uh, I The name Candace Miller is unmuted um, unless she's calling in under a different name. Um, you have to be logged in to use your phone for audio. So... If she has her phone, if you want to attempt to put the phone up next to the microphone that you're using, you can try that. That sometimes works.
Okay, I have her on speakerphone. Okay. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yes, you just have to speak up. All right. I don't know what's going on here, but anyway, with my technology. Listen, let me just uh, say um, there's a fundamental issue here of a difference of opinion. Uh, I, I think in Macomb County, generally, we think that dumping sewage into Lake St. Clair is bad. Eggle seems to think that if it's permitted, then dumping sewage into the lake or the river or whatever is okay. I thought it was interesting that you addressed the George W. Kuhn retention basin in Oakland County because it's permitted. And you said, you know, it's permitted, it's okay. You're going to have to look into green infrastructure. You know, after heavy discharges, all of the trees in the Red Run drain are full of sewer wipes, sewer wipes. And we have done DNA sampling. It's human waste. Runs through Warren, Sterling Heights, Clinton Township, Mount Clemens, Harrison, and then out into the lake. And it does all meet your permit requirements. So that is a fundamental difference of opinion, I think. Um, in regards to separating the sewers, let's get to Chapaton. Separating the sewers would be optimal. It's about $340 million, according to our uh, engineering estimates, which is not a realistic number. I mean, there's no way the locals could afford to pay for that. The retention basin that Eggle has mentioned as another option, we've costed that out. We think it would be about $90 million. Uh, and again, it's really not a realistic number. We can't afford it because this, this drainage district is East Point and about 80% of St. Clair Shores. So it's not like it would be spread out all over the county or something. In regards to another option, the green infrastructure option, which you've talked about at length here, in order for us to have enough green infrastructure, and I'm all about green infrastructure, but it, we would probably have to bulldoze entire neighborhoods and plant trees so that we could absorb the water. So I don't really think that that is realistic either. Um, in regards to, um, the, as, the, as Egel keeps saying, that we have some open sewage canal or lagoon there that we're building. That is such a gross mi mischaracterization of our Chapaton project. It is grossly mischaracterized. No wonder some of the folks at Harbor Place are objecting when they hear that kind of a thing. Really, what is happening there is an extension of the existing canal that Eggle did permit in 2002. And I will also just say this. I have been in public office for over 40 years. I was born and raised in St. Clair Shores. I've been, been advocating for the Great Lakes my entire career. I sit on the Great Lakes Commission. Um, I lived on Lake St. Clair. Do you really think at the end of my career, I'm going to put forward a plan that calls for insta installing a sewage lagoon along the lake? Seriously, that, that's not where we're going here. Regarding the odor, which a lot of folks have mentioned here, we actually hired a national expert to do modeling and to study on any odor. And really, there won't be a problem. It is stored for a short time, then dewatered for proper treatment down into uh, Detroit instead of discharging combined sewer overflows out into the lake. Somebody had mentioned, does anyone know about this? Actually, every we thought pretty much everybody did. We we did have public hearings. With, we actually had, we invited everyone, for instance, at Harbor Place, the Shore Club, which, by the way, they are in favor of this, and others that are in the immediate area. But we've had, it's been on the front page of the papers numerous times. We have received recently, after Egel has said that they're going to deny this, we received a unanimous resolution from the Macomb County Board of Commissioners Every member, every Democrat, every Republican, we have a, a unanimous resolution of support from the St. Clair Shore City Council. All Ms. of them. Miller, I have apologize. A, you have about a minute left. Okay. Our Thank United you. States Congressman has spoken about this on the floor of the House. Um, I guess I would also just say then, since I have a minute left, in regards to the waters of the state, the waters of the state is a 1,400-foot canal principally used as a discharge canal for combined sewer overflows. And again, you actually, Eggle, approved a 3 million gallon canal at Chapaton for the same, it, it's the same thing. You, so you approved that. 
the sediment buildup that was mentioned, we did a study on that. It's 0 0.05 inches per year. So that wouldn't be a problem. In regards to the flushing, we have provided a solution to flushing, including bringing water into the canal from the lake and then flushing it back down to GWLA. So we've tried to do everything that we can. I realize Echo is going to deny this permit no matter what we say. I got that. But I do think that you should listen to the locals. This is locally driven. It's locally funded. I and apologize. Okay. We've, uh, we're approaching the five minute mark for comment. Okay. It's environmentally positive. It's recreational friendly because the boat launch is going to be expanded at Blossom Heath and it's financially responsible. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, next. Um, presenter next uh, commenter I have and actually I we did find uh, Veronica Kleinfeld so uh, Veronica I'm going to unmute your line and you're you're unmuted on our end so just there you go okay uh, thank you first of all I want to um, mention that this is not only bipartisan but it's been a collaborative effort um, federal state county and local and each and every one of those has put money up for this project. Um, uh, uh, you keep referencing, referencing waters of the state. We are talking about a man-made canal that is enclosed on three sides, of which is used already to discharge um, when we have an overflow. Also, um, you spoke about other cheaper proven methods um specifically with regard to the marshes this is a built up area there is absolutely no way you can achieve that unless you tear down what exists that has existed for a long time and that's not going to happen and then the last thing i'd like to talk about is your organization keeps talking about proven methods how does a method become proven how can we ever try something new and innovative if we don't ever allow for anything new and innovative uh, because it hasn't previously been proven? That puts us stuck in decades in the past and never being able to move forward. And, and I will tell you, I do sit on the drain board and as Candace indicated, we spent a very long time looking at this from every avenue. We brought in experts in um, with regard to the odor, with regard to everything you said about the sewage buildup. We literally thought about each and every aspect of that. So um, I just I just want to say we cannot ever be innovative if we don't ever allow for something new. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And could could you please uh, repeat your name and any organization you're with? Because we didn't catch that at the beginning. My name is Veronica Kleinfeld. I am a Macomb County Board of Commissioner, and I sit on the drain board that is uh, with respect to this. All right, thank you. Okay, so that's the list of commenters I have that uh, requested to comment ahead of time. Now is the time I'm going to open it up to see if anyone else on the line would like to make a comment. Just as a reminder, if you want to make a comment, you can type it into the comment or into the question box, and we will submit those for the record. Also, if you'd like, you can just raise your hand and we'll tell to me your line. And I will give people a couple minutes here. Uh, while people are deciding if they want to comment, I do want to remind people that you don't have to make your comment tonight. Uh, there's also some other ways to make your comment. Um, show my screen here. Uh, you can submit your written comments to my water system. You can also send them to Matt Starin. You can mail them into him. And uh, he's got an email address too. So if you want to send it to Matt Starin, his email address is star 
O N M as in Michael at Michigan.gov. I'm gonna leave this up here for a minute. And also remember in your chat box, there's a link to how to submit comments. Also in your handouts, there's many reference materials. Okay, so I'm looking and we have another person that wants to make a comment, uh, Susan K. Susan K, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity of holding this uh, this meeting tonight and allowing us to comment. Um, my husband and I live at Harbor Place. Um, we look directly at the park and the canal. We're 24 seven intimately familiar with this property. Um, we love the lake. We live on the lake. We wanna protect the lake. Um, we do not, we wanna go on record. We do not support the proposed expansion as the highest and best use of funds to keep our lake clean. We, we do not support giving up a quarter of a mile of protected state waterfront and turning that into whatever the semantics you wanna call it, turning it into a, a sewage basin, treated sewage basin. Uh, and to say that it's exactly the same as what is behind us, as Dave Turner pointed out earlier, what is behind our property is largely covered by uh, a parking lot. There is some open area and the open area is, there is, it is sludge. There is no greenery, there is no life. It is, it is an eyesore, but it is behind us and it is treed off and so we don't look at it. This will be on the waterfront. Uh, Candace may not want this to be her last thing, but this is on the waterfront and it is going to be visible to, not just to us, but to everybody that comes out in this area. It's over a quarter mile long of, of, of sewage basin. And um, it's, it really is unthinkable. We are deeply concerned about the potential for spread of diseases and the environmental and health hazards of ex exposure, exposure to this chlorination basin um, and the resulting gases that will preclude life, that will impact the air that we breathe. It will be an insect breeding ground and there's toxicity that will result of this that will forever alter our environment. We, we say that we believe that there is no need to spend $30 million on this because as you pointed out, it, it only overflows seven times a year. It's going to go down to four times a year. $30 million, especially since it's not fully funded and since uh, I think it's Mr. Hertel said, or Mr. Karen said, that's okay, the rate payers, the very people who are opposed to it are the people that you're gonna expect to pay for it. Um, it's not going to. It's not going to improve the quality of the lake. It's going to reduce it from seven to four times, and you're going to spend thirty million dollars. I would say this could be considered irresponsible spending. Um, it's a densely populated neighborhood, and we uh, we the proximity that you're proposing to do this over a quarter mile long of a open air sewage basin is really unthinkable. We applaud the efforts to keep the Great Lakes clean. The health and welfare of the people of our neighborhood are of utmost concern. So we do not think that the $30 million should be spent here. We think there's other situations that will correct problems that are influencing the, the water quality where it would be a better alternative to spend money on those. Uh, we do not believe you should, we should create the largest open air sewage basin on the lakefront and in such close proximity to the, the densely populated area where we live and the marinas and the environment that we, we have today. So I guess that's my summary. Uh, thank you again for uh, allowing us to speak and to have a voice in this. And we encourage Eagle to de give a permanent denial and to defend it to the highest extent if there would be a challenge. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. I am going to do one last call to see if anyone else who, haven't, who hasn't spoken yet or made a comment would like to make a comment. And also, if you think you have your hand raised, but I'm not calling on you, 
uh, you might not have your hand raised. So you will want to uh, type something into the question box to let me know. All right, so now we do have a couple more people that want to make comments. Uh, Robert Hoban. Robert Hoban, I just unmuted your line. Thank you very much. I also am a resident of Harbor Place, and I do appreciate the fact that you've looked at this closely and that you've given us the time tonight to publicly comment on this. This is a grave concern to myself and my neighbors here in Harbor Place for the reasons that Susan and Kevin and Dave have articulated. I've heard a lot about studies of odors. I can assure you there are currently odors that come from the current facility and to expand it further is just gonna enhance those odors. What we haven't spent a lot of time about tonight is it is gonna use up a lot of very valuable land that's on the waterfront, but it also is gonna expand the facility in its width and bring it much closer to the residents here in Harbor Place. That will just reinforce some of the things that Susan and others have said about odors, about the environment, and the, the risk to the residents of this area. I really struggle to understand why we are giving up waterfront, enhancing an environmental risk to the residents for something that already is within the public standards as it currently exists. It just seems to me to take a lot of money and spend it to expand something that's already meeting public standards and give up waterfront and create the risk of greater environmental concerns is not a logical choice. So thank you for the time. Okay, thank you. Could you please again repeat your name and if you're with any organization? I'm uh, Robert Hoban and I'm a resident of Harbor Place. I My property abuts this current facility. All right, thank you. All right, check in to see if there's anybody else. And checking looks like uh, Ms. Uh, Richard Best would like to make a comment. Yes, um, I, I, I'm also a resident at Harbour Place, and I'd like to support the comments made by Bob, Dave Turner, Kevin O'Brien, Susan. Um, it seems to me quite simply, we um, this is not a zero-sum game. Uh, it's presented as solving a problem. However, to us locally, it's effectively creating an um, an eight-acre um, sewage retention pond with all the attendant risk to that. So I would totally um, support the eagle position that this should be denied for uh, lots of good reasons, but for also the reasons which my um, local residents have also supported. So um, please continue to deny this um, uh, program. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Can you please again repeat your name? I think I can't Richard remember. Your Best. Name. Richard Best, and I live at Harbor Place. Okay, thank you. Okay, one last call. If there's anyone who has not made a comment but would like to make a comment, you can do so. Just raise your hand. Also, if, if you've already made a comment and you want to add more, uh, to your comment, you can just go ahead and type that into the question box, or you know, if there's more you need to add, you can also uh, submit your written comments to us through the through the uh, procedure that we put right up there on the screen. Hey, this is Andy Hart. I would like to give a big shout out to Jim Ostrowski, who is making these virtual hearings pretty seamless process. I appreciate appreciate all your efforts, Jim. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Yeah, thanks everybody for hanging in there with us. It's a new, it's a new world now. Um, with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read off our closing statement. All right. So, um, all right. So as a reminder, uh, the public comment period for accepting written comments is open until June 23rd, 2020. And, and like we said earlier, that's the end of the day, June 23rd, 2020. We will consider all comments received. Written comments may be submitted online on, in our MyWaters database. 
directions can be found in the documents that you can access in the webinar and the handouts tab and also on the screen here. Uh, comments can also be submitted to Matt Starin at the following address, Water Resources Division, EGLE, P.O. Box 30458, Lansing, Michigan, 48909-7958, or at Starin M at michigan.gov. Thank you for your comments and cooperation, and we appreciate your interest and in that you took the time to be here tonight. The public hearing is now closed. Thank you. All right, so that's the end of the official hearing. Uh, I just want to uh, put it out there if uh, Phil or Andy or anybody on our panel has anything last they'd like to say. No, this is Phil. I just appreciate everyone being here tonight. Um, it is a different world where we don't have these in public, um, uh, but it's virtual instead. Um, but we appreciate everyone's input um, on this project. All right. Thanks, Phil. And, Hi, this uh, yeah. is Amanda. Just got a quick, um, if you did register and you used your email address, we will be hopefully sending something out tomorrow uh, with the handouts as well as the link to provide comments. So look in your email tomorrow for that information. Thank you. Yeah, thanks Amanda for reminding us about this. So we'll try to get that email out to everyone as soon as possible and I include those links. Um, and again, it's open till June 23rd at the end of the day. And um, yeah, so thank you everyone for joining us tonight and hanging in there and uh, yeah, for your comments and your time. Have a great rest of your evening. Thank you.